So if you have a vehicle and you think you have a bad camshaft position sensor, I thought I'd go over the symptoms of a bad camshaft position sensor, how you can tell if it has gone bad, along with other things that could cause the same symptoms of a bad camshaft position sensor and can also cause issues. And so first of all, what is the camshaft position sensor? Well, basically all engines need to be timed correctly. The valves need to open and close at the right time. The pistons need to move up and down correctly at the right time. All the components in the engine all need to be timed or else there's going to be issues. And so for the computer to monitor the timing of the engine, it uses different sensors. And the main sensors that it uses is the crankshaft position sensor and the camshaft position sensor. And so basically that camshaft position sensor is just monitoring the camshaft as it spins and reporting this information back to the vehicle's computer, which is using this to monitor the timing of the engine. And so what would be some symptoms of a bad camshaft position sensor? Well, the first symptom is very likely you're going to get a check engine light. The computer's going to see that there's something wrong, that it's not able to read that sensor, or that the sensor's reading the timing's off or something. And so very likely you're going to get some kind of warning light, like a check engine light. The main way you check to see if it is a camshaft position sensor is that you read the onboard computer for any codes. When one of these sensors goes bad or is having an issue, it's going to give a code. For example, if you get a P0341 code, that's going to be a camshaft position sensor A, circuit range performance, bank one, or single sensor. And that's going to point to a bad camshaft position sensor. If you don't have an OBD2 scan tool and the vehicle's driving okay, a lot of automotive stores like O'Reilly's or AutoZone or something like that, they'll come out and scan your vehicle for free and tell you what the codes are. There's also a lot of low-cost OBD2 scan tools available on like Amazon and eBay and things like this. A lot of them for less than like $20, $30. I'll put a link down below if you need one. And they're really easy to use. You just plug them into the OBD2 port. Every vehicle built after 1995 has an OBD2 port up and underneath the driver's side dashboard. You basically just plug it in and say read codes and it gives you the codes. But if you think you have a bad camshaft position sensor, the first thing to do is get a scan of the computer and see if you have any codes. Other symptoms would be like no start, stalling, hard starts, a rough or erratic idle, things along these lines. Of course, any of those symptoms can also be caused by many other things. So the first thing to do if you're having any of those problems and you think it's the camshaft position sensor is to scan the onboard computer for any error codes. And one thing about camshaft position sensors is that it can't be one sensor or there can be multiple camshaft position sensors. It's going to vary. It's going to depend on the engine, the year, different things like this. But basically to know which sensor has gone bad, it'll be right inside the code. So for example, right here, it's saying bank one or single sensor. And V6 and V8 engines are going to have two banks. Bank one is always the side of the engine with the number one cylinder. And then the opposite of that is going to be bank two. So inside of this example, it's saying bank one. And so the bank one side, which is the side with the number one cylinder, is going to be the side of the engine having a problem. If you just have a four-cylinder engine, then it wouldn't matter. You'd only have one bank. And inside of this example, it's also saying sensor A. And sensor A is going to be the intake camshaft position sensor, while a sensor B would be the exhaust camshaft position sensor. So if you find the intake side of the engine where all the air is going in on the throttle body side, that's going to be the side of the engine with the intake A camshaft position sensor. And if it was to read B, then that would be the side on the exhaust side of the engine. If you have a V6 or V8 engine, there can be four of these sensors. You would have a sensor A and sensor B on each bank of the engine. And one thing to know about these cam sensors or crankshaft position sensors is that some vehicles have what's called a relearn procedure, where basically that if you replace one of these, then you have to do a relearn procedure before the engine runs good again. Not all vehicles have this. Some vehicles you swap out the sensor and it'll run fine, there'll be no issues. But then other ones, you swap it out and the vehicle won't run right. It's still having problems. So you might have to do some research on your particular vehicle, year, manufacturer, things like this to know if it does have a relearn procedure. And basically, if it does have a relearn procedure, sometimes you could just drive the vehicle around or try to and the computer will relearn on its own. Or there might be steps that you could go through. So like if you look it up, it might be something like turn the key on, step on the brake, drive the vehicle 40 miles per an hour, stop. Things like this, there'll be some kind of steps that you go through and the computer will relearn the camp sensor. Most mechanic shops and things like this are going to have really good OBD2 scan tools that'll have a relearn inside of it that can tell the computer to automatically relearn. These type of scan tools are not cheap. These are usually expensive ones. But many high-end scan tools do have a relearn option inside of them. And if possible, it's always best to replace these sensors with an OEM original sensor. It can make this whole relearn procedure a lot easier because an OEM original sensor will be much closer to the specs that the manufacturer built into everything. For example, there's a lot of third parties camp sensors on like eBay and things like this. And while they usually work and usually there's no issues with them, every now and again you can get one of those sensors that's just really out of spec. 
and it just causes you issues. Sometimes that could be a headache. So if possible, try to get an OEM original sensor. And another thing to keep in mind is that there is other things that can cause issues with these sensors. It could throw them off and you could get a code that points to a bad sensor, but it's not bad. There's some kind of other issue going on. One thing to keep in mind with these sensors is that if there's anything wrong with the wiring, like an open, short, bad connection, anything like that, it's gonna cause the same symptoms as a bad sensor. There could be two wire sensors, there could be three wire sensors. Some newer vehicles can even have four wire sensors. The three wire sensors are pretty common. And basically what's going on with these is that when the key's in the on position, you're gonna have five volts going to it, you're gonna have a ground wire, and then you're gonna have a signal wire going back to the computer. And every single time there's a piece of metal directly in front of that sensor, it's gonna send a pulse back to the computer, and the computer can use this to track the camshaft as it spins. But basically keep in mind, anything wrong with the wiring is gonna cause the same symptoms as a bad sensor. Another thing that could cause issues is a bad timing chain or a bad timing belt. If these slip or if they get old and stretched out or anything like that, then they could throw things off and they could cause issues. These timing chains and timing belts are going to have timing marks and they all need to line up for everything to be timed correctly. For example, right here, you got timing marks right here and you got them up here at the top. And so all these marks should line up. And if they don't, if one mark is before a little bit or one mark's a little bit after, then it means that timing belt or timing chain slipped and that's going to cause issues. These timing belts and timing chains, they also can get old with age and they can get stretched out. And so when the engine's running, they're just kind of loose and they're just throwing the timing off just a little bit. And again, that's going to cause issues. But another thing that can cause problems is going to be a bad timing chain or timing belt. Also, most modern cars have what's called variable valve timing, which is very beneficial. It can help different things. You can get better gas mileage. The engine can run better at higher RPMs and things like this. But if components on the variable valve timing go bad, like the variable valve timing solenoid or the actuator or anything like this, then this can also throw off the timing and you can't get camshaft position sensor codes. Low or dirty engine oil can also cause issues because oil is flowing through these variable valve timing components like the solenoid and the actuator or phaser and things like this. So if the engine oil is low or if it's really super dirty, it can start to cause problems with these components and that'll cause issues with the timing and you can get camshaft position codes when that happens. And real quickly, here's a list of camshaft position error codes that you might get if you go to scan your computer. These are the most common universal codes. There can be other ones that can't be vehicle specific codes, but these codes right here are pretty universal. They basically go across all models of vehicles. And so that's basically it. I just wanted to go over the symptoms of a bad camshaft position sensor. If you have anything to add, please comment down below. If you have any questions, ask me and I'll try to answer them. If this video helps you, please click like, please click subscribe and have a good day.